You're listening to CGMQ 88.9 FM, and we have in the studio with us uh, Grandpa Bob, who's going to be talking about a uh, very serious issue. Would you like to introduce the subject, what we'll be talking about today? We're going to be talking about this uh, particular place in a little village called saint Armand, Quebec, which is uh, different people have been trying to have it recognized as an historical site. The place is called Nigger Rock. Apparently, according to Laura, there are... Uh, black slaves uh, that, that were buried at this rock and uh, a number of people trying to have it recognized as an historical site. Okay, so you did say nigger rock and that's something that a lot is going to shock a lot of people when they hear the term. And so I think we should probably put it into context is that, uh, that we're talking in historical terms and we're talking about the recognition of something that people have lived through and the name of the rock how did it get its name, and why should we not be shocked by you saying that? Well, without having to reveal it, I, I ended up, uh, just to give you a little story, I ended up writing a story about the uh, site to help out the cause. Uh, the name of the book that I've written is called Birdie, the Saga of Nigger Rock. And in order to find out why this rock was called out, or at least in the story, you'll have to uh, purchase the book or at least borrow it from the library and uh, check it out. But... Uh, on the other hand, you know, like, uh, yes, the, the N-word is, is a very pejorative word, just like a lot of other words, but um, uh, I teach a lot of different uh, young people. I've worked with intellectually handicapped people all, all my life, and I teach them to uh, empower themselves with those pejorative words that people use on them so that they can have them as their own names, and then the bigots that uh, use those words are going to be defeated without having raised any hand. Okay, so... I guess what I'm trying to get at, though, is uh, what is it all about? Why should we as, as townshippers know about this, and uh, why should we want to find out more? Well, you know, the thing is that regardless of color or size or long hair or short hair, there were people. These were people. They were hardworking people. Whether they were free or not free, you know, is another issue. And the whole story there is not about blacks versus whites or French versus English or any other culture. The whole story is about the fact that these were people, hardworking people, you know, with a heart and soul and body, and they were laid to rest there. And I, I feel, as long as so, as well as some other people, that they should be recognized. And uh, at some point, they need to rest in peace, just like everybody else. Okay, so at this point, I think also our our listeners could be wondering exactly what we're talking about. What we're talking about is a burial ground for uh, people who lived in slavery here in the eastern townships and that slavery did exist in the eastern townships, and there were slaves and there were slave owners, and there was a place where slaves were, after um, having lived long, I'm not, no one's claiming that they were murdered or, or anything like that, but that were laid to rest in an area that became uh, known as Nigger Rock. Is that is that correct? Correct. Now, the thing is that a lot of these people, uh, there was a, a time... Uh, even uh, just before the American uh, Civil War, where the British government had declared that in all of their colonies, including in Britain, there were to be no more slaves. So all of the black people that were around that were at one point slaves were definitely set free on paper. But on the other hand, when you consider the fact that uh, they had no education, all they had was a roof over their head, some clothes, a piece of land to grow their own uh, food, uh, vegetables, and so on, you know, and they worked hard for a person whether to, and most of these people were probably very nice people. You know, where would they go? You know, were they really free? You know, uh, even though they were free on paper. And this is the the question. They were hardworking people, and because they were black, or some of them were also native, they didn't have a uh, specific spot to be buried in with a little marble stone that had their name and date of birth and so on and so forth. They were just buried wherever there was a spot. And this is what happened to these uh, people here. Okay, so these are individuals who, even after having gained their freedom, remained uh, enslaved simply due to the circumstances in which they found themselves to be in. And that's understandable if you've spent all your life as a slave and then all of a sudden you're set free, free to do what? Free to go where? Free to, to get what kind of employment? You can imagine that during those days and those times, it probably wasn't that easy for someone to just walk out and make a living on their own. Correct. Especially if they've never known anything other than enslavement. Correct. You know, and and, and the whole idea is that, you know, they, what's important to note is that they were people. You know, just like me and you and everybody else, you know, people. And we tend to forget that, you know, they weren't slaves. 
you know, first, but they were people first. Yes, they were people first, people who lived in an environment that we could maybe fool ourselves into thinking that did not happen historically in our region. And I think one of the most shocking parts about it for a lot of people will be that uh, it did exist here in the townships, that there was slavery in the townships. And that's something that we need to come to grips with as, uh, as a community. Uh, absolutely. And, and I would certainly um, uh, wish to see that people would go to this uh, St. Armand. There's a lot of history there. Recently, I've been there. I've visited the rock several times. You cannot go on the property because uh, it belongs to some people, private people, which is understandable. But you can see it from the uh, uh, public road, which is called Luke Road, named after the original owners, uh, which was uh, Philip Luke and his son, Jacob Luke. There's a lot of other history. There's an old schoolhouse there, which was, uh, the new one was built in 1831. The old, the oldest one behind there was is kind of falling apart, but there's a lot of beautiful history, which includes a lot of the black people. I went to visit a church, which was built in 1819, and there was a, a gospel revival there uh, just a couple of weekends ago. It was just beautiful. I've also visited, there's a cave there where uh, some of the slaves were uh, hid when the posses would come from the States looking for them. So there's a lot of beautiful history, and if you want to know more, I would encourage you to go there and put in some pressures with the government, especially the local government, to have these places recognized as historical sites. Now, there's a few things that come up from that, and uh, things have ha have been happening in the past years. At one point, it looked like the government was going to recognize this site as an historical site, as a unique site, as it is uh, in the region, and then that fell apart and it didn't happen. Also, another thing is that the river that runs by that, because we're talking about a rock, but we're talking about a rock that juts out into a river, and the river also bore the the name of the rock. Isn't that so? Well, that, that's something that I'm not aware of that, but it's possible, absolutely, okay. because there's a lot of things. I've even seen a sign that said, uh, a Negro Cemetery, you know, people deny that there were black people in the area, but I saw an old sign that someone had, I even took a picture of it, you know, it says Negro Cemetery. Absolutely, there could be very well all of, all of that uh, stuff for sure. Now, I don't know if we covered it sufficiently, but as you said, the N-word provokes a lot of uh, animosity in a lot of people, and rightly so. Uh, we're using it today in the context that people that I know, that I've discussed this matter with, who were people descended from these people, said that they would be upset if the word wasn't used in context. And the context is that people who were held in slavery were buried in this cemetery. It became known as Nigger Rock and uh, bore that name. And to deny that name, they're afraid, would be to deny the history of what happened and how these people lived and how they came to be buried here in the townships. And I just guess it's a matter of us not turning our back on this subject and saying, oh, well, you know, that's a problem that came from other, another time and another place. It came from another time, but it didn't come from another place. It was here. Yeah, absolutely. And as a matter of fact, uh, there's, there's an anthropologist. His name is Roland Vio. He works for the University of Montreal. He wrote a book called Sur de Nigger Rock. He wrote it in French. And there's a lot of great information. He can even tell you when people were basically snoring or sleeping. And I would encourage people to look for that book. It's called Sudan of Iraq. There's a, a number of uh, people in the area who are interested in having this thing recognized. I know that the government at one point, like you said, there was a plaque that was made, but it was hidden somewhere in the town hall, and nobody knows where it is. Now, Hank Avery, who started all of this, a very nice fellow, he's a retired teacher now, well, all he wanted was a cross on the rock and a, and a plaque on the main road, on the public road, so that people could at least see it. And it would not would not be disturbing the people that own the land whatsoever at all. But even that, up to now, was denied by the governments. Well, Hank Avery, as you say, a very nice man. I've spoken to him quite often about this subject. It's something that we spoke about a couple of years back and something that I felt very strongly about. At the time, there was some question of uh, people being worried about the land being expropriated by the government to be made into an historical site, and that would be upsetting to the people who own the land. Of course, other people are saying, well, it is an historical site, and whether it's upsetting or not, uh, history has to be respected, and so something has to be done. seems like the government has come firmly down on the side of the middle, of where they do neither. 